you've been feeling the call to write a book, it is no accident. Your book is needed in the world, so let's make it happen. I'm Nicola Humber, and this is the Unbound Writers Club. Hello, magical soul, and welcome to the Unbound Writers Club. Today, I am joined by a guest, one of the authors at the Unbound Press, Amy Babiarts. Amy's book, Before We Rise, came out earlier this year. It's the sequel to her first book, which was called After the Last Fall. And this is a series of fictional books. And the first two certainly centre on a character named Jace. So you will hear Amy talking about Jace during our conversation, how this character is very much influenced what she gets to write about in her books and how Amy actually writes very much kind of influences her process. So we dive into that during the, this conversation. It's really, really interesting to hear how Amy's process has evolved, like from the first book to the second. I know there are going to be some juicy nuggets in here for you. So let's dive in. So Amy, welcome back to the Unbound Writers Club. Thank you so much. I love being here. <laughs> oh, you, I was just saying, you're an old hand at this. <laughs> I am. Like you, I am. <laughs> you've, you've been here a few times. You've got two books out in the world, which is incredibly impressive. And I'm going to begin by asking you, it's a new question for us here on the podcast, kind of similar to something I've asked you before, but from a slightly different perspective. So what would you say makes you an unbound writer? I, when you sent this question, I really had to sit and think with it. And I think my... My final takeaway is being an unbound writer looks for me like sort of shirking everything I know as my comfort and really trying to dig into the things that are important to talk about, but maybe still a little bit uncomfortable to talk about and, and learning how to push through that discomfort in order to put forth a really important message in my opinion not everybody thinks all of my messages are important but I do but to me that's what that unbound means is to to really get comfortable with being uncomfortable in the name of continual growth love that I think your messages are important as well <laughs> and Thank if anyone you. doesn't you know <laughs> that's their problem I talk a lot so you know some stuff you can just throw away <laughs> <laughs> so how did that let's relate that in particular towards before we rise because that's your most recent book that came out earlier this year how did that show up for you in relation to the writing process of before we rise you know, so the second book really digs deeper into the main character, Jace. And in the first book, I talk, you know, I talk about her, her anxiety, her mental health. We touch on the fact that she has a history with substance abuse disorder, but we don't really dive into it. And then in the second book, I had started it with diving into her overcoming that that substance abuse disorder or working through that rather. Um, I don't want to say overcome because, you know, that's something that people continue to struggle with and that's not a bad thing that they have this thing. So I had started that and then I was like, no, that's, that's too much. I don't want to do that. It's going to be really weird. Like people are going to read into this. So I threw all that out and then I wrote a different story. And then the entire time I was writing it, I knew that I needed to get, I knew I needed to show Jace as all of Jace, not just the parts that were pretty to write. So that was, I think I mentioned before, I ended up throwing out like 20 something thousand words to, mm. to go back to writing this, these scenes where Jace is really working on identifying who her people are and who she can count on and trust and who can help her get through this in a way that doesn't leave her by herself or leave her alone. And so that was really uncomfortable there are some people in my life who have been touched with substance abuse disorder. And it was really difficult for me to write these scenes in a way that I didn't want these people to think that I used them as inspiration because I didn't. It just happened to be a coincidental timeline. But, you know, it was really difficult for me to do that. And then it was really difficult for me to write this in a way that felt responsible to the people who were reading it, which is why you may have noticed at the beginning of the book, I put a disclaimer in there saying like, I am not a doctor. I am not a therapist. Mm -hmm. You know, these are well-researched, but I'm not, please don't 
do this on your own. There was a lot of discomfort in having to talk about a very, very real issue in a way that wasn't minimizing or glamorizing, but was still empathetic and compassionate. Um, and I think that was the most uncomfortable part of all of this was was digging into that. Mm, yeah, and I mean, from my point of view, you've done a really great job of that. Anyway. <laughs> but I absolutely, I kind of feel your pain in like <laughs> dumping. 20,000 kind of words that you'd I mean what was that like horrible I was like it was I have this image in my head of playing tug of war with a dog right which I'm using with my dog as an example because I just showed you his adorable face but you're tugging so hard and finally you're just like I have to give this up because one of us is going to get hurt Right. And so it was it was very much like that of like, I didn't want to get rid of this. I didn't want to get rid of this. And finally, I was like, this is hindering Jace's actual story. And I had to get rid of it. And I was just like, I like felt it sitting on my chest of like, oh, I have to throw all of this out. So that was terrible. But I have it, you know, as a draft in case it comes back up in another book, maybe. (laughs) Well, sometime, like, you're definitely not alone in this, and I'm glad that you've brought it up, because whatever we're writing, whether we're writing about our own story, or we're writing a fictional story, I, I think we can get into this place of writing, like, what we think other people expect or will approve of, and we get to a point where it's like, we just can't do that anymore. Actually, it's the same with life, isn't it? You know, we can live our life in that way and get to a point. It's like, actually, I can't. I have to, like, make this different choice. And it no, it's not comfortable. But I always say, like, no writing is ever wasted, even though it didn't go into this book. You had to go through that process to get to this point. And, and the book is, like, all the more powerful for it. And... I'm sure Jace is very happy as well. (laughs) She was quieter once I put that back in. (laughs) So how did you, how did you actually get started, Amy? And I know, like, obviously you've written the first book after the last fall. Was it the same kind of process for both of them in terms of getting started with them? You know, so I think the second one was a little bit different because the first one, was a happy accident. I had no intentions of writing it. I think I've mentioned before that I was on my way to a home visit for my social work job and I had to pull off to a gas station because the scene just popped into my head. Mm. So the first book, Happy Accident. The second book, I had more of an idea of what was going to happen next or what what some next storylines might be. So Starting the first book was really exciting because I had this brand new idea. And then the second one was also exciting to start, but definitely it took a little bit more um, determination, discipline, whatever you want to call it, to sit down and write it because I was like, yeah, 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 like Jason's story. And I had to really think about the things that I know about these characters as my own characters and the things that are really important that people wouldn't know if they or not in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was more difficult to start the second book. It was no less exciting to start it, but it was more difficult to start it because it felt like a bigger task, a bigger responsibility to, you know, have that continuity and to have enough that was making sense to people who were reading it, but also still doing right by the characters. So it was interesting to get it started. And, you know, I started it pretty shortly after my first book got published, but my first book got published three months before COVID hit. Mm -hmm. Um, So while I'm trying to write the second book too, you know, we're navigating a worldwide crisis and my partner and I moved and we were dating and then we got engaged and then we got married and then we moved states. So there was a lot of downtime in a way that there hadn't been a lot of downtime with the first book. Mm -hmm. So it was more of a chore, but no less rewarding, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I think we can be a bit naive with our first books. So we go into it and it's like, yay, this is exciting. And, you know, we don't know what we don't know. And then with the second one, we know more. And obviously for you, you know more about like the characters you're writing about. And you mentioned that sense of responsibility. And I think that can come up as we kind of move forwards on our writing journey. Like it feels, yeah, there's 
kind of more gravitas to our, our books, like the more the more we write. So yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that sense of responsibility. That feels important. Were there any particular fears, doubts that have shown up for you as a writer? Like right from the beginning of your process, like what's a particular one that's shown up for you? Yeah, I think, you know, the thing I always kind of wonder is like, why would people want to read my books or Mm -hmm. like, why would they be impactful? Or, you know, what if people think my writing is stupid? And I really have to remind myself often that like, yes, of course, I'm writing this book with the intention of getting messages to, uh, you know, to people getting these books in people's hands. But ultimately, I'm not writing for other people. I'm writing for me. But it's really hard to remember that. And so my fear was always and continues to always be, what if people think this is stupid? What if people don't like this? What if, what if, what if, what if? And it's all about judgment of others or, you know, like, I know, I know that my book is not going to be for everybody. And I know people are going to start it and be like, no, you know what? I don't really feel like finishing that. And that's not necessarily a mark of me as a writer, but just a mark of people's interests. But Mm -hmm. it's very difficult to take your ego out of writing. And so I think those those are the fears that continue to be of import to me is just what if people don't like this? What if people don't want to hear what I have to say? Or what if they think I've done a bad job? Or, you know, so I think those are those are the fears I always have. And I think that's probably human nature, but it's less about the process and more about how people feel about what I create. Totally, totally. Yeah, you're definitely not alone in that. <laughs> well, I, I don't know anyone who doesn't have that, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, how did you how did you move through that then? Because like I said, that comes up for everybody and, and not everybody does move through that. A lot of people get to that point and think, oh, you know, I can't I can't imagine who would want to read this, or you know, I'm gonna get criticized or you know, and actually, I don't want to, I don't want to risk that. So they'll, you know, put their book writing dreams on hold, like indefinitely, but you didn't, you know, that was there, and it continues to be there. And you've continued to write. So how did you navigate that particular fear? There is a lot of faking it till you make it, I would say, <laughs> where I have to be like, no, who cares? Like me, I care deeply. I care. But I tell mm. myself I don't care. And then when I cannot tell myself I don't care, my wife, Sarah, is the one who's like, no, you've written this amazing thing. Like, these are all the people you know, love it. Like, so she sort of reminds me of of the good when I get sort of bogged down in the concern that nobody's going to care what I have to write or nobody's going to want to read what I have to write or why are other people like doing different things than I'm doing or you know and she has to just she's very very good at gently reminding me that um, everyone has a different path and a different journey and that like again I'm not writing for other people I'm writing for me and with the first book I think I think again like it was a little bit easier with the first book than the second book because the first book, I was just so excited that I finally did this thing. And then I was finally getting this goal met that I had had since I was seven years old. You know, so it was so exciting that I was just like, yeah, I written a book, like, here it is, everybody. And then with the (laughs) second one, there really is that sense of responsibility, especially, especially given some of the more serious parts of the storyline that I wrote for the second book, there really was a sense of responsibility and a sense of ownership in a way that hadn't been there before. And so I think the fear is sort of ramped up with the second book because I got nervous. And again, that's why I put that disclaimer in because I was like, somebody somewhere is going to say they tried this thing they read in my book and it caused a problem. So I was like, we're just going to put a disclaimer in there. But yeah, it's interesting to see that the anxiety is actually ramped up with the second book, even though the first one was sort of what pushed me out there in the first place. So that was unexpected. Mm, mm. but it makes sense it makes sense I think there can be you know more expectation on our second book or you know Mm -hmm. our third book or whatever it is the first one it's like yeah I've done this thing and it's the first time so it's like you know maybe you don't have too many expectations other people don't but then you know the more we do something kind of the heavier the expectations can get so that totally makes sense I mean what's been your experience because 
before we rise has been out in the world now a few months so how's, how's it been and what kind of feedback have you received it's been really great um this time around because of the fact that we're not in COVID, I was able to do a lot more things, right? So I've gone to a lot of festivals and I there have been a lot of, the timing of the release was wonderful because it came out shortly before Pride Month hit. Mm -hmm. So I hit all of these Pride events in Vermont and, um, you know, I tabled at these events and I, I've i made items that go along with the book. So I make like wax melts and stuff. And so all of the wax melts I've made are based on characters in the book. So it's a really kind of, I have like, I have plans to do stuff later, but, you know, it's been a really cool way of marrying like arts into writing. And um, so that's been really wonderful. And, you know, I've I've heard nothing but good feedback about the second book, which is wonderful. It might be because I tell people if they hate it, just pretend they don't because it'll kill me. But um, <laughs> you but should put, that, really put that on your well. Amazon page. <laughs> no <laughs> negativities, please, because I will literally Absolutely. delete that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, the reception really has been wonderful and people have really enjoyed it. And I've gotten to hear from people that they've seen a lot of themselves in these characters. And so it's been really, it's been really great. And it's been awesome to see it actually going into the hands of people. Um, because, you know, with the first book, it kind of was out there and then I had no control over who got it or where it went. I had no way of connecting with people who were getting this book. And now because the world has opened back up and I'm able to do more things in person, I am able to connect with people. And, you know, I have people messaging me on Instagram now, like talking about the book and how they'd like to get the second one because they bought the first one at this festival. And, and you know, it's just been really nice to see that Jace's story does have an impact on people. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I'm going to ask you about um, whether you're continuing to write and <laughs> what might be next. But before we do that, what one piece of advice would you give to somebody who's listening to this, maybe just starting out? Like maybe they've started and those kind of fears are starting to bubble up or they haven't even given themselves permission to start writing their book yet. What what one piece of advice would you give? Be OK with laughing at yourself. I have drafts that I look at them and I'm like, oh my gosh, mm, what did you write? What are these words? <laughs> um, so, you know, I think, I think it's really important for people to understand that the first things that they write are not going to be the final things that they write and that it's okay. And it's okay to crack jokes. My sister and I joke all the time about, I, I thought I was being really creative and artistic. And I tried to explain that the wind was like flowing or whatever, but I said the wind flew through the air, which like objectively, yes, it flew through the air. That's what it does. Um, <laughs> but you know, so it's a joke now. And when it's really windy, my sister and I'll say like, the wind is positively flying through the air. <laughs> so, you know, you have to be okay with just humbling that. yourself and knowing that what you first write is not what you, going to be what you finally write. And it's okay that it's going to be terrible because that's how you continue to grow and learn how to write and how to include different forms of prose and other people are there to help you. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> big, big fan of laughing at myself <laughs> and encouraging others to laugh. <laughs> yeah. And like you say, that's how we get to hone our craft. It's not, you don't just immediately kind of start writing and be a brilliant writer like you know even the very best writers in the world they've had to start well you know everyone writes a shitty first draft you know that is a thing oh yeah <laughs> oh thanks so much for that amy so tell us what is what is bubbling if anything when it comes to writing of course no. things are bubbling i have about 10 things bubbling <laughs> um i'm throwing around the idea of either a third book about Jace or another, a book in the world of Jace, but maybe about Aureus. I think that Aureus has a lot to tell us, or maybe a book about Alaka. So I don't know. I know some, Jace's world is not done. I don't know if Jace's story is done, but certainly her world is not done. So I'm throwing some, I have some ideas percolating. I haven't started writing any of them, but you know, I'm always working on on other projects. I'm working on a historical fiction that takes place during the women's rights movement in Seneca Falls. And, yes. you know, so yeah, that's I mean, that's my hometown. That's my stomping ground. So I have I have a lot of access to some beautiful history there. And it's, you know, I have privilege, so I want to use it. So, yeah, I've got, you know, I've 
I've got about six six different projects happening right now, but <laughs> <laughs> love it. None of them are anywhere it. near ready to be in next steps, but I am I am always writing. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> like you are. Yeah, you're um well, you are a writer and it's always so good to connect with you because there's like so much comes through in our conversation. So I'm really, really grateful that you're part of the Unbound Press community. And I know you mentioned Instagram there. Uh, is that the best place for people to connect with you? It is. I usually my Facebook is just linked to my Instagram. So whatever's on Instagram just gets shared. And I recently downloaded threads. I'll be honest, I do not understand it. And I am not on Twitter because I absolutely do not understand Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it now. Um, so Instagram is the best way to connect with me, which is my handle is just a babby writes. And yeah, that's, that's the best way to connect with me. And um, I'm really trying to ramp that page up. So uh, yeah. That's, and I'm always happy to talk to people. So people are always welcome to reach out. Fantastic. And, you know, maybe you can share some, some puppy spam as well, because Amy has just become <laughs> a, puppy, a puppy mama. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, he has been, you, that, that's the other lesson I think I would give new writers is um, if you have dogs, don't let them be in your office with you. <laughs> <laughs> you will not get anything done. Oh, that that actually yeah I haven't got my own but um from looking after my sisters and also speaking with other unbound writers yeah I think that is a valid piece of advice so thank you very much <laughs> absolutely <laughs> oh so yeah everyone go and follow Amy on Instagram um and stay in touch with you there and thank you so much for being in the unbound writers club today thank you for having me it's always a joy absolutely